Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the try data structure. I've been asked to implement a try in interviews at both Uber and Yandex. Additionally, there are many problems on lead code that either require implementing a try or using it to solve a specific problem. In this video, I'll explain what a try is, where it is used in the real world, and how to implement it in Swift. A try, also known as a prefix tree, is a tree-like data structure used to store a set of strings, often for efficient retrieval. Each node in the try represents a single character of a string, and the pass from the root to any node spells out a prefix of that string. Tries are widely used in applications that require fast string retrieval, insertion, and deletion. One common use is in autocomplete systems, for example, in Google Search, where a try efficiently suggests possible completions based on the user's input by quickly matching shared prefixes in a large set of search terms. Another common use is in spell checking software like Microsoft Word, where tries allow for fast word lookups and suggestions. In IP routing, companies like Cisco use tries to quickly determine the best path for data transmission by storing network addresses in a try structure. Other applications like DNS lookups also take advantage of try based algorithms for efficient data retrieval. But why on earth is a try better than a simple array for prefix matching? Let's say you're given a collection of strings. How would you build a component that handles prefix matching? Here's one way using an array. To find all words that begin with a particular prefix, you need to scan each word and check if it starts with the given prefix. This can be slow, especially with large datasets. For example, if you have an array of fruit names and we want to find all fruits starting with AP, the array would require checking each word, resulting in a time complexity of O of n, where n is the number of words. On the other hand, a try stores the common prefixes just once. Take a look how the same set of words would be represented as a try. Most importantly, when you search for the prefix AP, the try can immediately navigate to the branch where apple and apricot are stored, making the search much faster. This results in a time complexity of O of m, where m is the length of the prefix, regardless of the number of words in the try, making it more efficient. Another feature of tries is that they save memory by sharing common prefixes between words. Instead of storing apple, apricot, and app separately, the prefix AP is stored once, with branches for the rest of the characters. While tries add some overhead with extra nodes and pointers, they save space by avoiding duplicate storage, especially with large sets of similar strings. All right, let's implement the prefix tree in Swift. We'll start by creating the building block of our try, the try node class. Think of this as the smallest unit of our try that holds a single character and keeps track of its children. Here's how it works. Each try node has a value, which is the character it represents. Note that this is an optional, because the root node of the try has no value. It also has a children dictionary, where each key is a character and the value is another try node. This helps us create branches as we build the try. A try node holds a weak reference to its parent. This little trick simplifies the remove method later on. Finally, is terminating tells us whether this node marks the end of a complete word. The initializer lets us create a try node with an optional character value and an optional parent reference. Now, let's move on to the try class. This is where we'll define how to insert words, search for them, and perform prefix-based operations. We start with a root node. It doesn't represent any character, so its value is nil. Think of this as the anchor point for the entire try. Next, let's talk about the insertion of words to our try. Let's say we have an empty try and we want to add the word apple. We create a new node for every character of the word. The last node has a dot, which marks the node as terminating. Okay, now let's add the word apricot. You can see that we're reusing the first two nodes because these words have the same prefix AP. 
but for the rest we create new nodes. Alright, what if we want to add a short word like app? Because we have all the needed nodes, we don't need to create new ones. The only thing we do is add a dot which marks P as the terminating node of the word app. Now let's jump to the code for the insert method. We start at the root and iterate through each character in the word. If the character doesn't exist in the children's dictionary, we create a new try node for it. Then we move to the next node in the chain. Once we processed all the characters, we mark the final node as is terminating equals true. This tells us we've added a complete word. The time complexity for this operation is O of k, where k is the number of characters in the word you're trying to insert, because we need to traverse through or create each node representing each character. Alright, now let's implement the contains function. This will check if a specific word exists in our try. This works similarly to insert. We start at the root and follow the chain of nodes for each character in the word. If at any point we can't find a character, the word isn't in the try. At the end, we return true only if the last node is marked as is terminating. The time complexity of contains is O of k, where k is the number of characters in the word you are trying to find. Ok, now let's take a look at the remove operation in the try. Here we have words apple, apricot, april and banana. Let's remove the word apricot. To do that, we need to traverse nodes up to the end of the word and then go back up to the root and remove all nodes that are not used for other words. You can see that we stop at character i because it is used for the word april. Ok, let's add a function to remove a word from the try. This is a bit more complex, because we need to do a few checks and possibly clean up the try to maintain its structure. Let's break it down step by step. First, we check if the word is empty. If it is, we simply return because there is nothing to remove. Next, we traverse the try to find the node for the last character of the word. We start at the root, and for each character in the word we check if it exists in the current node's children. If at any point a character is missing, we return because the word doesn't exist in the try. Now, we check if the node we are at is a terminating node. If it is, that means the word exists in the try. So we mark it as no longer being a complete word by setting as terminating to false. If the node isn't terminating, we simply return because the word doesn't exist here, so there is nothing to remove. Finally, we clean up all unnecessary nodes. This is where the fun begins. After removing the word, we may have nodes that are no longer needed. If the current node has no children and isn't marking the end of another word, we can safely remove it from its parents' children dictionary. We keep going up the tree until we find a node that either still necessary, has children or is the end of another word, or if we reach the root. The time complexity of this algorithm is O of k, where k is the number of characters of the word you're trying to remove. Moving on. The most iconic algorithm for the try is the prefix matching algorithm. This is where the starts with prefix method comes in. It returns all the words that start with a given prefix. First, we traverse the try to find the node corresponding to the last character of the prefix. If the prefix doesn't exist, we return an empty array. Otherwise, we call a helper function collect words to gather all the words starting from that node. This is a recursive function, and we pass an array results to this function by reference. If a node is terminating, we add the current prefix to the results. Then, for each child node, we call collect words again, appending the child character to the prefix. By the end, we'll have collected all the words that start with a given prefix. The starts with prefix method has a time complexity of k multiplied by n, where k represents the longest word matching the prefix, and n represents the number of words that match the prefix. If we used array implementation instead, it would take off k multiplied by n time to do the same. But n here represents all words in the try. For large sets of data, tries have better performance than using arrays for prefix matching. But how do they compare to hash maps? 
Hash maps are fast for exact lookups, but not great for prefix matching. To find all keys with a specific prefix, you'd have to scan every key, which gets slow with lots of data. Try handle this better by organizing data by characters, so they can jump straight to the prefix and find matches quickly. Ok, let's test our try. I have some test data prepared. So, we create a new try, insert a few words into that try. Apple, orange, etc. Then we call the contains method for the word orange, and we can see it returns true. Next, we use our remove function to delete orange from our try. After that, we verify that orange is no longer present. The output shows false now. And finally, we call starts with method with just one letter A to get all words that start with this letter in the try. As a result, we get an array of avocado, apple, apricot, and almonds. Ok, great. In this video, we learned what a try is, where it is used, and how to implement it. Thanks for watching, and have a great day!